Okay, it's 6.32, and I'm going to call the Newport City Council meeting to order for Monday, June 1st, 2020, 6.30 p.m. This is a remote meeting. Um, I'm going to poll the council um, to see which members are with us this evening. At the time, I will unmute the conference um, and then probably remute because I am getting background noise from a couple of the participants and it causes some issues and so it would, it would be best if you stay muted until you if you wish to speak. Um, if you have dialed in on a phone it should be star six to unmute and then star six to remute. If you're on the computer app there's a little mute button that people generally use. And so with that, I'm going to uh, poll the council. And at the time, if you um, unmute yourself and say present when I call your name. First is Dan Ross. Uh, present. Kevin Charbonneau. see Kevin let me just uh, do something here I do see Kevin Present. okay um, Melissa Patterson I'm here okay and John Wilson John, can you hear me? Present, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Laura Dogan, city manager, are you present? She was. Um, okay, I do see. Oops. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can okay. hear you now. Okay, I am present. Uh, Chief Harlemer is present, and City Clerk and Treasurer Jim Johnson are present. Okay, that was a, a very good. So with that, I would entertain. Uh, the next item is to approve the minutes of May 18, 2020, and I would entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? Uh, Dan Ross, second. Seconded by Mr. Ross. Discussion on the minutes? Then hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, the ayes have it. Motion carries. The next item is uh, comments by members of the public. If you wish to make a comment, um, any member of the public, you can unmute your microphone. Okay, I didn't, and if, with that, I didn't hear anyone wish to make any comment, public comment, so we'll move on. The next item is ATV MOU amendment, and this is to include Union Street to Prouty Drive East to the Newport City border. That's about approximately 525 feet of road frontage on Crowley Drive heading towards Derby. And it's also to amend the curfew from 10 p.m. Um, from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. And those are the changes that we wish to make. Um, the first reason for the Union Street 
the little um, section was since Derby is opening up their roads to uh, all-terrain vehicles, we felt it was in the best interest to have it connect to Newport via that Crowdy, Crowdy Drive connector. And then also there was a request to change the hours um, instead of starting at 8 a.m. to start at 7 a.m. There was some requests for that. With that, um, I don't know, Laura, did you have anything you wish to add? I think you covered it well. Uh, I, Grant Spates, who's the chair of the Derby Select Board, and I had a good working conversation last week to try to be as uh, congruent with each other as possible. They want to make sure that their uh, curfew matches ours. We think the users will find that easier. And uh, the extension on Crowdy Drive is specific to allow border-to-border uh, -to -border touch right there. So uh, as Derby opens up all their, their roads, people will be able to come down the North Derby Road. This section will allow them to turn on Crowdy Drive and then get right on Union Street. So um, hopefully, uh, hopefully that makes sense. And I'll be interested to hear if there's any comments from the city council members. OK. Yes, um, I know Travis, the police chief, Travis being my police chief, is on. I didn't know if you wish to add anything um, before I open up the council members. Uh, Mr. Mayor, no, I think that's that's good. Um, that I'm in, I'm in agreement with all the curfew change and the uh, route change as well. Um, the complaints that we had that it are. Um, in place of people not riding on the actual routes that are designated and our, our assumption is that it's from residents that live within the city that are trying to access the trail um, and those are the complaints that we've had so far. Um, so yeah, I'm in agreement with all of that. Okay. City Council members? Uh, Dan Ross here. Go ahead, Dan. I, well, you know, we've opened up our city to to non-residents, and we've restricted our own residents from being able to get to the trails from their homes. And there's several people that live on a side street that, you know, they could drive right to the trail, but we can't restrict our people to go and trailer their uh, machines to one of the spots when they're, you know, they're living in the city. So I think we're going to have to deal with uh, allowing our citizens to travel on the streets. Uh, I was going to say, I agree with you. I know I've had a couple approach me where they live within probably 100 feet of the street, and they actually have to, and they're, they're not technically allowed to go down their street to the trail. So I have had that um, request made to see if we could open up um, city streets to the residents. Other council members? This is Melissa, Mr. Mayor. Um, I I absolutely empathize with the folks who are living, you know, within, you know, well, wherever they are in the city and they want to access trails. The complication I see is how is that regulated or enforced if it's just city residents who can do that. Um, I can see that anytime there's an ATV not on the not on the regular designated routes for everyone, the trails. Um, you know, I can see people calling in with complaints about, you know, vehicles, ATV vehicles on non-approved roads um, when there might actually be a city resident who would have permission to do that. So I, I, I just see some complications with that, um, that, you know, some people can, but other people can't. Okay. So it's almost... To me, it's almost as if we just need to open up the streets, and that way there would be no question. Um, that's just me looking at it from my, my thought process. Mr. Okay. Mayor, is it Kevin Charbonneau? Go ahead. I, I, I agree it would make sense for, for people to be able to access the trails. However, before we move too fast on, on opening up all the city streets, 
we should give a, a time frame for residents to weigh in. All right, other council members? Mr. Mayor. Yes. John Wilson here. Yeah. Um, do we even know if Derby's open to everything yet right now? They're having their meeting also, I believe, tonight, aren't they? They, they, they were talking to go the route of the MOU, but they still have issues with uh, uh, some roads and their own uh, ordinance that houses right beside the road. I, I will agree with Mr. Charbonneau and uh, Melissa that uh, if we're going to open this city up, we, we need to go ahead and bring the public back in on this. And here's my other comment. With what we have for paperwork in front of us, we're here to uh, amend the MOU, which added uh, the streets and uh, Prouty Drive. Nowhere in here was it we were going to alter the curfew. The curfew uh, was addressed, uh, I think it was the 27th by Mr. George, that we should open up at X and somehow come up with a 7 o'clock. But it's not on the MOU. And I, I believe on the, uh, supposed to be voting on uh, what's on the council uh, agenda. And what is it? We just don't have the paperwork. No, the agenda basically yeah. was to open up Prouty Drive and to amend yeah. it by amending the MOU and to change the hours by, by just adding one hour in the morning. Okay. And that's but what this we other issue. That's what we I mean, were we planning have... on. That's what uh, we were I planning. Have... That's what we were planning on. I was planning on having us vote on this evening just to okay. amend those two things on the MOU. Yeah, because the other bit where, um, well, I live close to the uh, trail, because I've got a house here in Longview, they've got three ATVs, and, and they whip on up to uh, Pleasant Street, uh, and, and that vi would violate what we have right now, but how are you going to enforce it? I, it's... Anytime you get stopped, well, I just live right at that house. And Travis Bingham, even when this was first addressed, was not in favor of uh, opening it up. From, I live close to the rail, so I can just drive my ATV up there. In one of his uh, emails with the city manager, uh, he wasn't in favor of, he was okay with the time change, but he was not in favor of making it uh, easier for people to go up three or four houses to get on the trail. I thought, so, uh, my, I would say my interpretation was it was not in favor of, I'll let Travis explain it, but my interpretation was that a permitting system would be much more complicated to deal with. That was my interpretation. Uh, Travis, right. uh, would, you, would you like to clarify? Because that was my interpretation of your note was you weren't really in favor of like having these permits issued for different streets. Yeah, from for enforcement side of things, it's if you open up the three streets for us, it would be way easier to um, enforce it. Like there, there would be nothing for us to enforce at that point because you could have a four wheeler on any street. Now, people that are riding from out of town, they're going to follow the Polaris ride app. They're going to follow the main routes, the routes that are side. It's going to give the residents that live within the city an option to go from their house to the trail or their house to wherever they're heading to. Um, to do the permit system, I was not crazy about that because I don't know how we're going to enforce it. Uh, it's going to be hard for us to see a four-wheeler that's not on the main route and find a ticker on it that says uh, Newport City Residence or something like that. So that was my concern. My concern was 
to open up the streets if that even was going to happen, and it would be much easier for us to enforce that than to try to do a, um, a permitting process for city, city residents only. Okay. Other council questions or comments? Mr. Mayor, this is Kevin Charbonneau. Go ahead, Kevin. I, I'm for opening up the city streets. I just think, as I said, we should let the, the if there are concerned citizens, if there's complaints we're unaware of. Uh, it's certainly something we can take up at the next meeting on June 15th, and that would you know, give a couple weeks for people to uh, give the voice. My, my thought process was to kind of hold off for most of the summer and see how it goes over the summer. That was my thought process. Um, not looking at everything up in a couple weeks, but to let it go for a couple months. Because um, we're into June, you got June, July, you know, maybe visit in August or September or something like that. That was my thought process. Let's give it a, give it a few months or a couple months to see how it's going. Um, the police department will have, a, you know, uh, a good track tracking of, you know, incidences throughout the city. Um, we'll just get an idea of how well it's going or how, you know, I mean, uh, where the issues are. And so I wasn't ready to rush right into opening all the streets up. But I, my only thought process as far as that was um, it would make it easier for the residences uh, who live just a few hundred feet away from the official trail or even whatever uh, to get to the trail eventually. Right. Right. Uh, I think you're you're probably right. Uh, Can I move your sand? Um, Go ahead, Mr. Charbonneau. No, I, I was just agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it would be prudent to, to give it more time then. I know from what I've seen, it seems to be working very well. I can say that I was downtown Saturday night, um, and I must have counted 25 side-by-sides going through Main Street, and they were stopping and getting takeout food from at least three to four of the restaurants on Main Street, which is helpful um, to help them. And uh, they, from what I could tell, they were obeying all the, what I could see on Main Street, they were obeying, you know, all the laws on the street. And they certainly weren't anywhere as noisy as some of the vehicles that were driving by with the souped up mufflers and so but what I, that's just my observation I think it, actually optimistic it's been a benefit to the city um, and we'll just have to monitor it mm -hmm. other council members Melissa, and again, I think it's it's me that I think it's a prudent um, move to you know not rush into to opening you know streets. I think we should see what, how it's going with what we have in place. Let that play itself out. Um, observe what's you know how it's impacting <laughs> the state, and then we can I think further on you know take into consideration and again you know get input from folks and take into consideration opening other city streets for, for folks. Um, you know, I think it's the best way to go about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go oh, ahead, Mayor. This, I'm sorry, Jim Johnson would like to say something. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, as a, as a non-ATV owner, uh, I don't have a problem with opening the streets to the city, but if you're not inclined to do that now and want to wait to open all the streets, 
I think it would be prudent to allow the people in the city who own an ATV and live 50 feet from the trail to allow them to get to the trail. That's my opinion. Why, why, I, I agree with Dan. Why are you penalizing the residents of the city that owns an ATV and has a trailer is ATV 50 or 100 feet? That's ridiculous. I don't disagree with that aspect either. I just not sure how we how we go about doing that. Um, what the easiest way would be to whether we have all the uh, people who have side by sides at Newport to come forward and what street they live on, and then we go from there. Um, I mean, I know where certain people live, um, and it would wouldn't take much for them to come down the, where they live to the to the trail. But I just, I'm not sure what the easiest way of doing that would be. Maybe the chief, uh, maybe Travis, maybe he could have an idea or input on what might be the best way of um, opening up or allowing residences to uh, go to the trail. Yeah, yeah Mr. Mayor, it would, it would be difficult for us as the police agency to enforce that and know who's from the city, who's not in the city. That's that's my only thing that um, I keep going back to. Like I, I don't know how I'm supposed to tell if somebody's on the wrong trail if they live within the city and they're within 100 feet of their house. It would be very hard for us to police that. It's almost as if we'd have to have a bright colored sticker on on the they would have to put a bright colored sticker or something on their actual ATV to kind of flag it. You know, whether it's on the windshield on the windshield or on the frame or something. I'm not sure. And that would that's what quickly popped into my mind. Mr. Mayor, uh, Jim would like to speak again if he could. Yep. Okay, so I understand Travis wrote about enforcing it. Uh, the sticker thing just to put on a windshield with a color sticker isn't a bad idea. But believe me, if there's an ATV on that in a neighborhood street that doesn't belong there, every neighbor in the rest in the neighborhood is gonna know that ATV doesn't belong there. They know who's got the ATV, in my opinion. All it takes is a call to the police department. And I'm sure you'll get them. And if they're not doing anything wrong, it doesn't matter anyway. Okay. Council members, uh, thoughts? This is Melissa. Um, going to, I think we need to put more thought into this and obviously we, I don't think we can vote on it as part of the MOU because it wasn't you know part of the information that came out I think we need to look at this longer and have a um, you know have a plan in place on how we're going to assess whether or not we should do that so maybe um, we can form a committee or I don't know something just to ha in order to take a look at this, as we, you know, mentioned, taking some time to look at it. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. Is it possible that the council would vote on the items that were on the agenda so we can at least resolve those two issues? Well, that, that's what I was going to have us do tonight, was at least for Prouty Drive and then the, uh, the time frame. That we can at least vote on tonight. But the other, the other discussion we can hold off on, um, hold off on the uh, streets. I mean, maybe maybe within a month we could bring that that part up. You know, do this in baby steps. Anything else from council members? Then I would entertain a, a motion on item number four, which was the ATV MOU amendments. 
which the first was to include Union Street to Prati Drive east to the Newport City border, and then the second part of that was to amend the curfew so it would go from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. And that's, we would need a motion on that if the council chooses. Uh, Dan Ross, uh, so moved. Motion made by Mr. Ross, is there a second? Captain Charbonneau, second. Seconded. Discussion? Then, all those in favor, say aye. I think the discussion by other people. Oh, we can jump in then. But they're only voting on those two bits. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's her. Excuse me, did you, did you have anything, Pam? Can we comment on the prospects of opening up everything? Or are you only focusing on just the two items? We're going to just focus on those two right now. Okay. Anything else from anyone? Then all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda was the ratification of the Public Works Contract Bargaining Unit. Laura, I don't believe we got a, a contract, a signed contract from, from a, 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 the final contract from the union. That is correct. We are not able to vote on that tonight. Hopefully, it'll be on for next week. We did that. You know, the great hurt. Okay, so we need to skip skip number five then. We don't really need to table it, we'll just skip over it. That's okay with the councils, it's, we can't take any action on it. So Laura, we'll probably plan on having that on the next agenda, hopefully. I'm gonna try, thank you. Okay, we'll move on. New business, Mr. Ross? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Charbonneau? Nothing. Ms. Patterson? Well, actually, I was just wondering about um, the restaurants and on Main Street and how things are going and outside dining and um, any, if there's been any thought about how it's, if there's anything the city can do to help, I don't know, help with that. I don't mean monetarily or anything like that, but I know perhaps if we could allow for more seating area on the sidewalks or something. Again, I haven't really explored this, but I was just something I thought maybe we can think about or get some input on. And maybe they don't need any, you know, I don't, I haven't really talked to anybody. It's just one of those things I was just sort of thinking about. So. I, uh well, following that, Melissa, I had a great chat with Frank, um, at Frank at Lagos Saturday night about that. What you your idea? Because you had mentioned it to me about what we could do. And he kind of liked the idea. What we were saying is that we could either, maybe on a Wednesday night or a Thursday night, you, you close off part of Main Street to allow the restaurants to have more outside seating, um, just to help the business. Because right now it's tough. So even with the outside seating, it's tough for all of them because it's still very weather dependent. And until they can, as he said, until they can open up inside, it's still a tough go. And they just, they, they pray for good weather, um, is what he was telling me. But he kind of liked the idea. I was bouncing the idea of what you were saying, Melissa. Maybe we allow, like, maybe a, a bigger space on the sidewalk or we have like a food night on Main Street where we close the street on a Wednesday or a Thursday night, something like that. So it's something that really needs to be looked into because I know he, he liked the idea. And again, um, you know, if I don't, I'm not quite sure if we can, you know, talk to all the restaurant owners because I think it's Main Street that's probably got the biggest problem. If you think about the side with the Newport Natural food store, you know, cafe and Dusset Thai and 
the warehouse are all really close to each other, and so if you have to social distance, it really limits, I would think, the number of tables. But again, the restaurant side, you know, is it is it worth it for them? You know, I'm, I'm not sure about tables and, you know, staffing and, you know, all this, this, this. So I don't know the ins and outs of it all. It's just at this point, I think it, if it's something the re any of the rest of the council thinks we should try to pursue, then I think it would take conversation with the restaurant owners and, you know, going down that route. May I interrupt? I don't want, I don't want to be presumptive and think that I know what they need because I don't. Right, right. Um, may, I, may I respond? Mm -hmm. um, one thing that might give you some comfort is I, I know that the Newport City Downtown Development is looking at doing very similar to what you described, Melissa. And uh, they're looking at the street closure policy and are going to be filing that with the city and working with the restaurants to try to do a highlight on the restaurants that are located downtown by closing off the streets, allowing the tables to be moved, making it a real festive celebration. Uh, inviting the restaurants that might not be downtown as well to be able to participate. And um, they're looking at doing this for a couple of evenings, perhaps near the end of June and throughout July. Of course, it will be coordinated with the, with the restaurant owners, and part of this initiative will require developing community enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's designed to draw people downtown to do exactly mm -hmm. as you have described. And uh, uh, Jim Davis at the downtown organization is uh, managing those details, so I hope we'll be able to have some um, fresh details for you by the next meeting. And I'm glad you brought that up because it does seem that highlighting these restaurants is uh, a good time to do it, particularly with the ATV traffic. And I understand St. Johnsbury has had good success, and I believe Montpelier was the other municipality. So let's see if we can uh, stay on trend with that. Well, that's certainly good. That means I don't have to sit here and ruminate about it any longer. <laughs> Somebody actually is working on it. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, no, you. I, yeah. And then um, one thing that I never thought about, but Frank, uh, Melissa Frank, Friday, Saturday night told me, says you can even have ro uh, roaming musicians going up and down the street, just something to add to the ambiance, you know, yeah. and so... Because I know Montoya is running the snow. I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Any other new business, Melissa? No, that's it. Okay, Mr. Wilson? Well, the only question I have is probably the city manager. Any idea when we're going to be able to open up City Hall and he says so. We're following the protocols, uh, and um, I'm not sure because right now I think we're we're staying on course through June 15th. But if anything changes, we'll let you know, and we'll change the hours on the marquee as well. So so far we're playing it pretty close to the vest. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. All right. Laura, did you have any new business? I have two pieces of new business, if I could. Okay. One is um, our solid waste implementation plan is about to expire on uh, June 30th, and a new one is being drafted. Because of COVID-19, the protocols for drafting it have changed. Uh, there, there will be two public meetings after July 1st. The plan will be submitted to um, the Department of Environment Conservation for pre-approval. Once I get that pre-approval, it will come before the City Council for those two hearings, or meetings rather, they're not hearings, they're meetings. Once the Council approves that, the plan will then become effective. We have until November 1st to make that happen. In the meantime, we're finishing up year five. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. In the meantime, we're finishing up year five. As part of year five, we are required to conduct another survey. We did a survey in 2016. It was done by SurveyMonkey on our website. At that point, we received a total of nine responses. 
And it's the exact same survey that we're required to do again. If people would please take time to fill it out, it's, it's 10 questions. And the link is located on our website at the bottom of the page under recent news. And that would be much appreciated if folks would do that. I'll post the draft swipe on our website as soon as I get the pre-approval from the Department of Environmental Conservation. So stay tuned on that. That's a process. And on a completely different subject, I'd like to invite the community to participate in a, a community update summit scheduled for Wednesday, June 17th, 6 to 8 o'clock p.m., and it will be done remotely. The last time that we had a community meeting was back in March of 2019, and we were on a pretty good streak here holding them two or three times a year. Well, it seems most opportune as we wind down from a pandemic to bring folks up to date on the variety of projects that we're working on right now. Uh, we'll have guest speakers, including the Vermont Land Trust and MWA. We've got some uh, Green Mountain uh, Water Association. Um, I'll be inviting the Mefra Magog Mar uh, Community Maritime, a couple of other uh, entities that, that do a lot of work in the city to come in and give the community a, an update on the projects that we're all working on. So I'm hopeful that people will uh, take the time to come. Again, that's Wednesday, June 17th, 6 to 8 o'clock, remotely. You'll be able to participate from the comfort of your own home. And it will be facilitated professionally by someone who uh, is very skilled at using these uh, remote platforms with great success and large audiences. So stay tuned for some more information on that. We'll be generating the postcards and posters this week and we'll be distributing them very soon. That, that's all I have for new business. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Johnson? Sorry, say it again, please. Uh, no, I'm not all set. Okay. We'll move on. Old business, Mr. Ross. No. Mr. Charbonneau. No. Ms. Patterson. No, I don't have any. Mr. Wilson. None. Okay. Ms. Dogan. Our next meeting on uh, June 15th, we'll have another uh, public meeting on the current solid waste implementation plan. So stay tuned for that. It'll be riveting, I promise. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any uh, old business, Mr. Johnson? No. All right. This time, the next regular scheduled council meeting will be Monday, June 15, 2020, 6.30 p.m. And as of now, it's going to be a remote meeting again because I have seen no new guidance coming out as far as having public meetings in the public space. So I'm going to continue on as um, the governor's um, work order, stay at home, not stay at home order, but I follow the direction of the state and, and follow, I look at that every day and I look at the Vermont League every day and there's been no new guidance as far as um, remote meetings versus meeting in person. And so the next meeting, we'll plan on having it as a remote meeting once again, unless something changes between now and then. But I don't think it's going to at this point in time. It's Mr. Mayor, this is Laura. Before you adjourn. Yes. If I, I just got a message from Brian Smith, who confirmed that their curfew in Derby matches ours, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., and class one, two, three, four are all open. Legal tra trails are closed to ATV traffic. So that's great. It seems that we are in alignment, at least on the curfew. So uh, good conversation tonight, folks. I just want to thank you. Okay. All right. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn at 7-Eleven. Devin Charbonneau, I'll make that motion. Motion made. Is there a second? Is there a second? Melissa will second. Seconded. Discussion? 
Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are now adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.